Hi friends. Well, <laughs> Juan just gave me a look. <laughs> what's going on today? Well, what's going on today is we're painting the whole side of the house. We started out just doing the edges that were kind of crumbling down around the base all the way around here and then we ran into a problem. And the problem is that we couldn't match the paint. I have that five gallon bucket of paint that was the paint from four years ago but the sun has bleached the paint and we mixed it and mixed it and I even went to the paint store and tried to match it and uh, we just couldn't do it. So we decided the only way to do this was to repaint the whole bottom part of the house here. Uh, we disturbed a wasp nest over here. There's a couple of them looking for the... Ooh, there's another one. They're looking for their... They're looking for their house that isn't there anymore. Their house is behind this pot over here. Anyway... I, uh, I'm going to go into the house today and talk to you about something that's bothering me. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. So every day, nearly every day, in the comments on my channel, I get sent this link to a video done by the CGTN News Network about robberies being on the rise in Lake Chapala. I can't tell you how many times I've been sent that link, probably more than 30, and I've written a response to it, and rather than type out my response to it every time, I have cut and pasted my response to several of you who have um, sent me that link. I decided to do a video in response to that link because every once in a while I've gone back and revisited the actual video to make sure I'm saying what I say accurately about the misinformation that's in it. So I decided to just make a video about it. So that's what's on my mind today. Robberies are on the rise at Lake Chapala. Let's talk about it. I'm not going to give you the link to that video because I don't want to be a party to spreading misinformation. But I will tell you where it comes from. It comes from CGTN. And if you don't know, that stands for the Chinese Global Television Network. It's a television network owned by the Chinese government. So I'm picturing this, a reporter is given an assignment. Hey, uh, we read that the robberies are on the rise in uh, the north shore of Lake Chapala. A lot of expats live there. Hey, uh, go over there and see if you can make a news story about it. So, let me read you the byline of the Chinese Global News Network. CGTN.com is the official website for the China Global Television Network, which brings a Chinese perspective to global news. Today, I want to give you a Mexican perspective to the same news. Am I qualified to do that? Well, I've lived in Mexico for nearly 20 years. My wife Lynn and I were talking at our last anniversary, which was uh, 47 years of marriage, that we have lived in Mexico for nearly half of our married life. Uh, for those of you who are math fiends, that's 42% of our married life we have lived in Mexico. 20 years out of 47. So, do I know something about Mexico? Well, yeah, a little bit. This video is so full of misinformation and misinterpretations of truth that I just could not stand to not 
make a reply. I'm going to go through and give you facts as presented in the video and then my reply to them, but I'd like to read to you just a little bit of the beginning of the video description from that video. Roughly 50,000 expats from the U.S. and Canada relocated to what was once considered to be a peaceful paradise in Mexico. It starts out with saying 50,000 expats live on the north shore of Lake Chapala. <laughs> That's just not true. The north shore of Lake Chapala has a population of around 150,000 people total. And 10 to 15 percent of those, which is maybe 15,000 people, are not Mexican. They're foreigners, expats. So it's not 50,000 expats who have clogged the north shore of Lake Chapala. It's 10 to 15, maybe 18,000 during the high season, which is in um, December, February, December to February when the Canadians come, uh, the snowbirds. So, right off the bat, first sentence out of his mouth, he's totally inaccurate. It's not 50,000 expats. He got this from listening to the chief of police in Chapala who said, oh, we have about 50,000 people here. He's talking about Chapala and the, his jurisdiction. Um, and it goes up to 60,000 on the weekend. That's because uh, thousands of Guadalajarans, there are five million of them, come down to the lake for the weekend. Mexicans, not expats. But the community of Lake Chapala says crime has increased 10 times in the past five years. In the past decade, most of Mexico's worst crime has been restricted to certain areas like the southern part of the country along its border with the United States. But in recent years, violence, including home invasions, carjackings, and gun battles, has been spreading to neighborhoods once thought to be peaceful. Well, let's talk about that. There has been a great effort by some local groups and the local government to make it easier to report crime and to encourage reporting crime. That makes the crime statistics go up. Don't confuse more reporting with more crime. Some more from the video description. As a result of the increased crime, many transplanted foreigners in Lake Chapala have left Mexico. They've either returned home to the U.S. or Canada or relocated to other Latin American countries. <laughs> I know people who've moved to Guatemala. I know people who have moved to Ecuador. It's like a handful of people. There is not a mass exodus back to the United States or back to Canada, or to Latin American countries. And if there were, they'd be passing a whole lot of that caravan you've heard about coming north as they went south. It's just not happening. The governments of the U.S. and Canada have both issued warnings to expats and tourists about Mexico's violence. I'm registered with the U.S. consulate in Guadalajara as a foreign resident, a U.S. citizen who lives as a foreign resident. I went back through, and you get emails. That's the warnings he's talking about. You get emails from the U.S. consulate. I went back through my emails on Gmail, and I found some, and I want to share with you the warnings from the U.S. consulate about the violence in Mexico. This reporter published this video on January 19th, 2019. So I went back and I looked at the security alerts from the U.S. consulate to all of the people who are registered as foreign U.S. citizens. January 17th, 
Suidad Juarez and Chihuahua City, Mexico. The event, this is from the U.S. Consulate General. The Consulate General is aware of a series of connected attacks against police officers in Juarez and Chihuahua that started on January 17, 2019. That's 1,500 miles from Lake Chapala. That was on the 17th. The next day, here's the next security alert. U.S. Consulate General, Suidad Juarez. This is an update to the January 17th security alert. The U.S. government employees are again permitted to visit police stations and other law enforcement facilities within the city of Chihuahua and Juarez to conduct official business. They are permitted, once again, to not be paying any attention to the previous security alert. And what I want to say about these security alerts is they are cover-your-ass alerts from the U.S. government because nobody wants to wind up with their Secretary of State sitting before Congress answering about what happened in Libya. They just are CYA alerts. Now, I'm not saying they're that, that they're not valuable, and nine out of ten of them, and I get them like maybe once a week sometimes, are about hurricanes or weather alerts, or it's just general information about, oh, you can't apply for your passport until, you know, three weeks from now because the office is closed. Stuff like that. I went back two years, and I never found a single security alert about Lake Chapala. There was one for Guadalajara a year ago. I'm going to read it to you. Date, May 21st, 2018. Metropolitan area, Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. U.S. Consulate has received reports of narco blockades and police operations on May 21st, 2018 in the metropolitan area of Guadalajara. The U.S. government personnel are advised to shelter in residences overnight and to coordinate with the consulate if traveling outside of the city tomorrow. Next day, May 22nd. Metropolitan area, Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. U.S. consulate in Guadalajara no longer advises U.S. government personnel to shelter in place. The U.S. consulate is open for normal business hours. <laughs> Those are the security alerts. And again, I went back two years, and that's the only one I found anywhere near here. There were some others in um, Playa del Carmen over in the Yucatan. Um, and it, again, it was like, uh, oh, this happened, and then the next day it was, well, okay, don't worry about it anymore. That's the security alerts from the U.S. consulate for the violence in Mexico that this video says is driving people back to the U.S. and Canada or south to Guatemala and Nicaragua. It's just not true. Back to the description of the video. Correspondent Alasdair Baverstock traveled to Lake Chapala to take a closer look at the escalating tension. Alasdair Baverstock does not know what he's talking about. He starts out with a pleasing English voice that says, on a balmy summer's evening on the north shore of Lake Chapala, expats are gathered to watch the baseball game in the local sports bar. The lake, which used to be wonderful, is highly polluted with mercury content 300 times what's recommended by the EPA in the United States. Last week I did a video about pollution in the lake for a, because of another video that gives you misinformation. <laughs> T 
Test in the lake, and you can go back and watch that whole video if you want. Test in the lake show that carp, which are the high, the most highly polluted with regard to mercury concentration in their meat, was 0.39. Lake Chapala's pollution for mercury is four times better than the standard by the Food and Drug Administration for the mercury content in a can of tuna fish in the United States. Alistair, or whatever your name is, stop spreading BS! Here's another one. The local economy relies almost exclusively on the expat population. BS! <laughs> of course, we influence the economic picture of the north shore of Lake Chapala. Were we not here, there would still be 150,000 residents who are building homes, who are buying groceries, who are painting like Juan out here. It's just not true that the expats are the exclusive economic influence of the north shore of Lake Chapala. It is the weekend destination for five million Guadalajarans where the middle class is growing. Many of the homes here are owned and vacant all week because it's Guadalajarans who come down for the weekend. My house was not a house that was lived in. Neither one of the two I bought here. It was owned by Guadalajarans who might come down for the weekend. Next door to me are some condominiums. Two of them are owned by uh, expats. The other four are owned by Guadalajarans who may or may not come down for the weekend, maybe once a month. One of them, he, we see him twice a year. The rise in rents and the rise in prices for housing is driven partly, of course, by expats here. But the greater influence is Guadalajarans and the rising middle class in Mexico that knows for the last thousand years that this is a wonderful place to spend the weekend. It's not expats driving up the prices. Here's another statement. Mexico is living through a crime wave that saw 30,000 murders last year. You know, that's absolutely true. But, I'm going to give you a lesson in the logic. I'm going to say something that's absolutely true. You can't argue with it. Last year, Every person in the United States who died of cancer brushed their teeth. That statement is absolutely true and means absolutely nothing about the reality of the situation of cancer or its cause. Everybody who had cancer and died of it brushed their teeth. You cannot necessarily get a picture of reality by stating true facts. It's true that 30,000 people were murdered in Mexico in 2017, but 29,000 of them were in the cartel drug transportation business. Now, I don't know if that's a real number. I just made that up. But the point is that the cartel <clears throat> wars for over territory are very violent, but they skew the murder rate in Mexico greatly. If you're just a regular person and you're not in a cartel, you're pretty darn safe. Also, um, those people that are shot by the cartels, they're not getting shot in malls and high schools and churches. 
He states in that video that there was a gunfight last August, that'll be August 2018, that, and let me quote, in August, the local community was shocked to its core. I was here. I actually heard the gunshots that he's talking about. It was a police action. There was a shootout. People were injured, both officers and um, a gang of home invasion uh, a gang. The community was not shaken to its core. Sounds good for a news report. Probably gets you viewership. Sells ads. But it's not reality. I love his interviews with the chief of police of Chapala. We just went through an election. All new city officials in January. Every six years, there's this pattern, and if you've lived here for 20 years, you begin to recognize the pattern. You get a new police chief who says, Oh my God, crime is terrible, the last administration didn't do their job, I need more money. The police chief would be derelict in his duty if he didn't take the opportunity to talk to a reporter and say, Oh, we don't have enough officers, crime is terrible, we need more money in the budget. It's his duty to do that. Wait about five years. In five years, his story will be, oh, crime is down. Uh, we've done a good job. Uh, he'll be working on his legacy. Right now, he's working on his budget. <laughs> if you listen to what the police chief really says, he says, we're making sure that there's no vehicle theft, no petty theft, or vandalism, and it's a big challenge for us. He doesn't say he's failing. He says there's a big challenge. And then there's the lady who started the Neighborhood Watch. And I support her. I actually know this lady. And she has uh, nothing but very good intentions in her heart. And what she has done for her neighborhood is a very good thing. But, read between the lines. She set this thing up. They had two home invasions. And they caught two perpetrators. That's a 100% success rate on stopping crime. And the police chief says, Yeah, we had this home invasion gang, but we got them. Crime comes and goes, and it does everywhere, any place you are in the world. And the North Shore of Lake Chapala is no exception, but it's not a part of our daily life. One thing will happen, and it gets repeated over and over and over on the Internet and in the U.S. news media as though it happens all the time, and it gives the impression that these things happen a lot more than they do. And then you get a reporter who comes to town for a few days, and what does he do? He interviews some victims of the crime. He doesn't interview non-victims. Here's my headline. After nearly 20 years of living in Ajiji, Jalisco, Mexico, Here's my headline for the week. Five million Guadalajarans and thousands of expats were not, I repeat, not the victims of crime this week. Here's another idea that if it were true, it would concern me. It's not true. That's the idea that locals are beginning to resent expats because of all of the rising prices. Are local Mexicans beginning to resent the fact that there are so many expats here? Well, I'm sure there's some of that, and I'm sure that you can find some who would say that. But the fact is that I'm <laughs> resentful of the fact that there are so many expats here. 
I'd love to be able to turn back the clock 20 years like it was before there was a Walmart and before there was a Soriana and before there was traffic and before there was so many expats here. But the Mexicans are not as resentful as that video portrays. Nor are they of the mindset of the two guys that he interviewed. In 2016, when it was obvious that there may be a new president in the United States that Mexicans are not terribly fond of, the local powers that be, I'm talking about the mayor of Chapala, the police chief in Chapala, uh, and in Ahihik, called a meeting in the town plaza. They invited expats to come and listen to a message they had for us. And the message was, we like you here. We want you here. You're an important part of the community. And no matter what happens north of the border, you will still be a valuable part of our community. That's the sentiment that I get from my Mexican friends. I have Mexican friends who are, by any definition, poor people. They are not resentful of us. Expats have created an oasis here in Mexico on the north shore of Lake Chapala where wages are higher. Jobs are available. There was one older gentleman in that video that said, oh, the young people have to leave because they can't find jobs. They have to go to the city. They have to go to Guadalajara or Tlacopaki. I was hearing that about Mission South Dakota when I grew up. Yes, of course. As populations grow, younger people have to spread out to larger cities. That's not a function of expats on the north shore of Lake Chapala. That's a function of the fact that there are twice as many people on planet Earth as there was the first day we walked on the moon 50 years ago. Twice as many. The population of the Earth has doubled. Yep, young people have to go to the bigger cities to get a job. A lot of people here on the north shore of Lake Chapala, a lot of Mexicans, are very appreciative of the fact that we pay more for maids and gardeners and plumbers and electricians and painters. He's doing a great job. Let's go take a look at it. Oh, look what a nice job Juan is doing. Wow. Total ban? Si. Hey! Oh! <laughs> Wasps! Here's another one. Crystal meth addiction is rampant on the north shore of Lake Chapala. My friends, I lived in Portland, Oregon for 27 years. I know about crystal meth addiction. I can watch a person walk down the street and I can tell you by the shape of their rear end if they're a meth head. I don't see that here on the north shore of Lake Chapala. I'm not saying there's none, but rampant? Stop listening to the Chinese television network. Oh, another quote from the police chief in Chapala. We haven't had anything serious like murders, nothing like that. Now that's actually not true. <laughs> there have been murders. But I want to tell you that it is my experience and observation that the people have been murdered were murdered for a reason. Violence is not random in Mexico. It's targeted. Enough said about that. This one is maybe the one <laughs> that got me to make this video. 
Older, vulnerable residents are like shooting fish in a barrel for the criminal element on the north shore of Lake Chapala. I'm not even going to reply to that because you wouldn't like the language I used. <laughs> the reporter ends with what might be considered a rather positive note. He expresses it as a hope that the north shore of Lake Chaprala can recover. It doesn't have to recover, it's just fine. Of course it's got its problems. Every place has its problems. But um, I've had people who left comments on my channel here that say, well I was ready to come uh, visit and check out the area but now my husband watched that video and he's never coming to Mexico. That makes me angry because it's misrepresenting the true nature of the home that I have chosen. Mexico is not a perfect place and it's not for everybody. And Ajijic in particular is not the sleepy, wonderful, quiet place that I came to nearly 20 years ago. What place is? Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.